Okay, good. Well, um, to the multiple Anastasias, I don't know what the deal is there. Anastasia actually works with InvestPub. Um, not quite positive what happened there, but um, we'll get that figured out. Uh, either way, let's just move on. Thank you all for coming tonight. Thank you for taking your time. My name is David Gilmore. Uh, I'm with InvestPub. Uh, where we like to uh, talk with professional traders and find out what they do, why they do it, what makes them successful. Um, real quick, I guess just a, a little bit about if, if this is your first time. Like I just said, uh, our goal is just to put the best and brightest in front of you, uh, let you, you know, benefit from their knowledge and their experiences and hopefully learn something and be entertained at the same time. A um, little bit about tonight, uh, it's the options as income with Blue Nose Capital. Uh, I personally actually have been managing money for us for over two years now, so I've enjoyed our relationship. And uh, we've got two great speakers tonight. Uh, we've got Rob and Joe, Rob McCullen and Joe Natoli. Um, so, you know, they're going to talk about what they do, why they use options, uh, you know, how they're how they're keeping an income stream coming, so and why this works for them. Uh, they've got some great insights. I've already seen the presentation, so I think you're all in for a treat. Um, but without further ado, uh, I'm going to introduce the first of two. Like I said, uh, we've got both of them here. Uh, Rob McClellan, you uh, you there? Yes, I, yes, I am. I think I got the whole microphone thing figured out. So, <laughs> well. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Rob, if you will, just kind of introduce yourself and take it away. Sure, sure. Good evening, everybody, and uh, thanks, David, for that kind introduction. And uh, uh, my name is Rob McClellan, and I'm one of the two managing directors here at Blue Nose Capital Management. Um, as David mentioned, we also have uh, Joe Natoli, who's the other managing director and our head trader here uh, on the call as well. And you'll be hearing from him um, a little bit later. In the, in the presentation. I, I want to start by um, thanking all of you for uh, for joining us tonight. I know that um, we're all busy and your time is valuable and we appreciate you choosing to spend some of your time with us this evening. Uh, always it's evening here on the East Coast. I guess people could still be afternoon. But, so we'd like to try to honor your time tonight without cutting short some of the information we want to convey. Uh, and to that end, um, we're going to try to keep our, you know, the prepared remarks to you know, 25 minutes or so, uh, and uh, of course we'd be happy to stick around and answer um, as many questions as, as you all might have uh, at the end of our pre prepared remarks. Hopefully by the end of this presentation you'll have gained uh, you know, some information about uh, what managed futures are um, in general and, and Blue Nose Capital Management in particular, uh, who we are, what we do, how we do it, and uh, a little bit about what we think makes us different from uh, from other CTAs. Um, so, but before we move on, I'd like to make sure we bring to you a message from our friends at the National Futures Association uh, concerning risk. I'm not going to read this entire statement, but uh, I would would highlight that um, uh, past performance isn't necessarily indicative of uh, future results and that futures and options trading does involve substantial risk of loss and isn't suitable for all investors. Um, I'm going to cover uh, most, but not all, of the information that's contained in these slides. I may skip through some, but uh, you don't need to worry because um, I know that David uh, Gilmore and will be circling back with you to answer any, any specific questions that you might have that would, uh, would arise uh, from the presentation. So uh, just a Quick little bit of information about us as a firm. Um, you know, we are a registered uh, CTA or Commodity Trading Advisor um, with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission, a member of the NFA, which is the National Futures Association. Um, our primary goal is to develop and implement alternative investment strategies intended to generate better than average growth over time as consistently as possible. We have four trading programs currently. Two, which focus on the selling of options, uh, which we'll talk about in a little bit more detail later on S&P 500 futures, and two, whose focus currently is uh, solely the energy market and specifically uh, 
options on crude oil futures. Joe will we'll talk in more detail about the programs and, and uh, how we how we do that later. Um, we, we try to be as flexible as we can with money um, in, in order to try to generate positive returns in, uh, in all market environments, rising, falling, flat. Um, and uh, Joe and I, between the two of us, have uh, actually, I guess I'm getting old. I haven't updated this slide in a while. Uh, we, we have considerably more than 25, well, more than 25 years of experience in financial services and, and managed futures option trading specifically. So uh, a few words about uh, about Joe and me. Um, I have uh, I have my degree in finance from uh, the College of William and Mary here in Virginia, in Williamsburg. And after graduating, spent uh, a few years in uh, corporate finance prior to getting involved in financial services at, at Merrill Lynch in 1995. Um, I left the, the brokerage business for good in 2001 after moving from Merrill to uh, what was then Payne Weber, um, and uh, again, I left in 2001 to start an investment advisory firm uh, here in Virginia, and was a was a general partner in a, in a very small hedge fund, and we, we ran some institutional money as well. Um, ran that firm until 2011, which kind of overlapped with Leonardo's Capital Management uh, founding. Uh, Joe has a degree in economics from Randolph Macon College, and a master's in finance from George Washington University here in the district. Uh, he worked as the trade desk manager for Chesapeake Investments from 2000 to 2003. And upon leaving uh, Chesapeake, he formed a commodity trading advisor called Zephyr Asset Management, which he ran from 2004 to 2007. Uh, we, we founded uh, Blue Nose in, uh, in 2010, in uh, February of 2010. Um, for those of you who may not be familiar with the term managed futures, real briefly and broadly speaking, managed futures are separately managed accounts that are uh, run by professional managers trading in assets that are considered to be commodities. Uh, for example, we trade options on futures in the S&P 500, um, more on that later, which are considered to be financial commodities and options on oil futures. So therefore, we fall into this broader asset class of uh, known as managed futures, um, which are all alternative investments. And most people have heard of uh, you know, the most common alternative that people have heard of is uh, a hedge fund. And uh, there are some distinct differences and advantages to managed futures over over hedge funds. And there are a few of them listed here. Uh, managed futures don't have lockup periods or fees uh, to get your money out. Uh, many hedge funds, I mean, I know I used to run one, you know, have lockup periods that, that range from, uh, you know, anywhere from those three months to well over a year. That's not true with managed futures. Clients can liquidate their accounts at any time. Uh, there are significantly lower initial investment minimums for uh, managed futures programs. Uh, hedge funds, most of them are typically only available to accredited investors. And that's basically folks with a lot of investable assets. And, uh, frequently require large initial upfront um, investments, many in excess of you know half a million dollars. We, we had a two hundred fifty thousand dollar minimum, for example, in the, the fund that we ran. Um, as an example, our account minimums uh, range from fifteen to thirty thousand to get started, so it's a lot more accessible, a lot more accessible than, than hedge funds. CTAs are registered with the CFTC, uh, the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. Hedge funds are generally subject to uh, you know, lighter regulation and, and not quite as much oversight as uh, managed futures programs are, of course, much more transparent, which is a, a much bigger deal in a post Madoff world where uh, investors in managed futures have their own account at the FCM or commodities broker of their choice. Um, and all the reporting and everything goes directly to the client. We don't actually handle it. CTAs don't actually handle any client money, so there's no custody of assets. Um, another nice feature is that uh, your positions are, are marked to market every day, um, just like just like any other investment account. At the end of the, the end of the market day, any uh, positions in your account are marked to the to the close of that day, and you can see day to day. Although it may not be the best thing to do to you know, monitor it that closely day to day, but you can see uh, you know how you're doing every day, whereas you know, hedge funds maybe report monthly, many you know, quarterly, and, and they may never report what their specific holdings are. So 
there are some key differences between us and our uh, brethren there in the, in the hedge fund world. Um, as far as our as far as our investment strategy and, and kind of philosophy is concerned, I'll speak in broad terms, and Joe will address some really some specific uh, some more specific items uh, in a couple of minutes. Uh, we we believe and have for some time that investing in stock indexes and commodities, uh, not individual stocks, not day trading, has the for example, has the best potential for returns over the long term. Um, it's worth noting here that all of our trading programs, whether the S&P programs or the oil programs, are designed to be and should definitely be viewed as, as long-term investments. This really isn't the type of strategy to employ if you're uh, trying to chase returns or may need money in a relatively, relatively brief time frame. Um, in fact, I've, I've read articles that, that talk about managed futures and how you should evaluate them over at least a three-year period. Um, and, and I would encourage all of you to make sure when you're looking at our programs that you look at them in that light as well, uh, you know, of a minimum of a three-year time horizon. Um, our strategies um, principally involve utilizing options contracts on S&P futures and oil, oil uh, futures, as I mentioned. Um, the basics of options on futures are no different than those, of, than those uh, for stocks or any other um, security for that matter. Um, in, in, you know, in the event that you might need a brief refresher, you know, there's uh, certainly you can ask David and, and there's information in this presentation that would help you out there. There are five, we, we employ five key elements to, um, you know, in our investment philosophy. Um, we, we refer to them as fundamental analysis, technical analysis, what we identify as st a strategy, money, management and then risk assessment. Um, fundamental analysis, by this we mean an examination of the fundamental financial condition of the market, whether it's the equity market or the oil market. Um, this would include things like the market PE, earnings estimates for the S&P 500 as a whole, um, earnings growth rates, etc. Um, technical analysis uh, utilizes charts and metrics such as moving averages, trend analysis, price volume and momentum oscillators and all that fun stuff that, that goes along with technical analysis. Um, technical analysis actually accounts for a substantial part of, of our trading approach here at Blue Notice Capital Management. It's, it's an integral part of what we do and is, is probably the single most uh, important piece of our overall um, investment strategy. Uh, strategy by by strategy, what we really mean here is is determining an appropriate overall approach or strategy given the current market conditions. Um, should we be selling calls, for example, or puts? Uh, is it is it a market that we even want to be in, be investing in at all, given what's going on? And so these are the types of of uh, decisions that we make as we develop a particular strategy at a particular time. Uh, you know, when we talk about money management, we're talking about the process through which we balance the risk return, risk reward, um, relationship decisions uh, with respect to accounts. Um, for example, we would we rather maybe take a small loss on a on a position, uh, preserving the maximum amount of a of a client's capital, or maybe hold on. You know, that, those are all decisions that that we have to make on a daily basis. Um, as, uh, you know, as, as the market conditions change. Uh, and finally, risk assessment, it's, it's kind of related to and kind of goes hand in hand with money management. Um, we're constantly evaluating the, the relative risk in the market. Um, again, this is, um, this is more of a, is this an environment where we think we can trade? How do we want to trade? Do we want to remain invested or, or just move to the sidelines completely? Um, so uh, we are, there are the basics of options, but I'm going to skip that. We are um, we are option sellers uh, primarily, uh, otherwise referred to as option writers. Uh, in other words, um, based on our evaluation of the market conditions, we will we'll sell either calls or puts, maybe both concurrently on the S&P or in the case of the uh, energy-focused programs, the oil futures contracts. And as a seller of options, our um, our goal uh, is to sell a contract with the idea that at some point in the future, we'll either 
buy it back, buy that same option back for a for a lower price, making a profit, uh, or that that contract will reach expiration, uh, all options expire uh, out of the money and expire worthless, allowing us to realize 100% uh, of that price or premium that we collected originally as a profit. Um, obviously, you know, selling options uh, has a considerable amount of risk uh, associated with it, um, and as, as do all of these uh, managed futures and option strategies. So the, all that being said, there are definite advantages um, to being a option seller as opposed to the buyer of that same contract that we might be selling. The biggest being that as a seller, we don't need to be 100% right. Um, in other words, due largely to the time decay feature of, of options contracts, uh, a seller can be wrong about the overall direction of the market so long as they're not more than 100% wrong. Um, so that maybe to help illustrate a point, the uh, illustrate the point maybe better, the, the Chicago Mercantile Exchange Clearinghouse um, did a study and, and they found that more than 85% of all the options that were sold um, from 2004 to 2007 actually expired out of the money or worthless. So statistically speaking, the odds are in favor of the seller over the buyer of any given, of any given contract. Um, what this means to us is that we can make money in, in rising markets, even if we think they're going to fall, just as long as they don't rise too much, declining markets, or even flat market environments without having to be 100% correct. And when you're a buyer of an option, you not only have to be 100% correct about the direction, but you have to be right twice, you know, when to exit and when to, when to enter that, when to get out of that contract, rather. So this, this we think, is a distinct advantage of, of our particular strategy of, of, selling, uh, of selling options. Um, at this point, I think what I'd like to do is have Joe um, after I run through some real basics on our program, walk you through um, some more detailed information about how we do what we do. Um, but uh, I would refer all of you, of course, to our disclosure document, which contains all the you know, a whole lot more information than I'm going to provide right now, just in the interest of time. All of our programs um, are 100% discretionary. So what that means is we don't utilize any systemized trading or automated trading strategies or algorithm generated trading. You know, our strategy is based entirely upon, and we base all of our investment decisions on, on our evaluation of the market and, and our experience as traders and, and, and really Joe's experience uh, as a trader and, and you know, where we feel would be best deploying uh, money. Uh, the first two programs that we introduced were uh, S&P focused op, um, programs. Uh, both of these programs are naked option selling strategies. Uh, the underlying strategies are the same, and I've, and I've touched on, uh, you know, on the objectives there. Um, we have the first program is called the we call it the uh, the BNC for Blue Nose Capital uh, EI program. EI program uses options on the S&P e-mini contract. Uh, of the two programs, it's the more aggressive of the programs that we offer. Uh, by aggressive, what we mean is uh, they, they, we tend to be a little bit closer to the market when we establish positions. Um, it's traded a lot more actively um, than our second, than the other uh, S&P-based program, which, we, which is called the BNC-BI program. Other than being more conservative, further away from the market when we establish positions, for example, the uh, the primary you know the primary difference is it's more conservative and, and doesn't trade anywhere nearly as much as as the other. Our other two programs are focused on the crude market, um, utilizing options again. There, the first of these is what we call the CC program, and it is the only program that we run that is not. Uh, a naked option program. We actually are spread writers, writers there. Um, the biggest advantage to that, uh, of course, being that we're able to identify the size of, of any potential loss on any one position when we enter it, which of course you can't do when you're when you're selling 
options naked. The CL program, CL comes from the symbol for the oil, the oil contract. Like our S&P based programs, that's a naked option writing program uh, and uses the, the oil futures contract as the underlying. So with that really brief run through of the four programs that we have to offer, I'm going to hopefully turn the microphone over to, to Joe here, so to speak, and, and he can walk you through a couple of examples of uh, trades that I think the uh, trades that we've actually made this month and kind of talk about the thought process behind um, you know, how we how we made these trades and, and why we made these trades and, and the outcomes. So Joe, if you're there. I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah, I can. So I guess everybody else can. So Excellent. So I'm assuming everybody yours, else sir. can. Well, well, welcome, everybody. And uh, thank you again to Dave for putting this together and for your valuable time. As Rob said, I am a managing director and also the head trader. Being the head trader is not rocket science, but it sure is close. And we'll get into a little bit more detail in a bit. Right now, I'm just going to give you an overview of <clears throat> what we do uh, fundamental-wise, chart-wise, some of our thinking, some of our indicators that we use, some of our time frames. And then we'll go into some actual trades that were made this month in the EI program. We're market technicians. And what that means is we use chart analysis to help us predict future price movements based on pattern recognition and other essential information. Some companies and individual, individuals use just fundamental analysis. We actually use both. As Rob said, most of our analysis is technical, probably about 80%. Now on to the, the technique and technicals. This may be repetitive to some of you. If it is, I apologize. Uh, but just as a brief in introduction, there are many different types of charts. There are bar charts, line charts, histogram, and point and figure, just to name a few. At Blue Nose, we use Japanese candlesticks and many proprietary and non-proprietary indicators. Candlesticks were developed in Japan during the 18th century by rice traders. And it is a unique way of charting the, the market and to get a better feel, in my opinion, for extremes in the market. And that's what we are looking for at Blue Nose is to, to find those extremes so we can better enter and or exit position. We look at approximately 150 different charts a day, some of which include the Dow Jones Industrials, the NASDAQ Composite, the Triple Qs, Spiders, and the Euro Dollar. The Euro Dollar actually at times can be a leading indicator for the S&P, and that's why we keep an eye on that. And of course, our main bread and butter, the S&P 500, both cash and future, and the crude markets and varying months in the crude markets. The charts we look at are in many different time frames, including yearly, monthly, and weekly. We use these longer term charts to understand the current trend where the market has been and where it might be headed. Oftentimes, the longer term charts can give an early warning sign to potential inflection points in the market. However, most of our analysis concerns the daily chart and the different time segments of this chart, such as the 120 minute chart, 90 minute chart, 60 minute, five minute, and those are just to name a few. The chart that is currently on the screen is just a simple daily chart of the S&P cash market up until today at uh, approximately, there's not a time on here, about 12 o'clock, 12.15. And on this particular chart, there are just a couple indicators, stochastics and uh, the MACD. Moving on to our next chart. All right, this chart, although it looks very 
garbled on your screen probably looks much different on mine because I have eight different monitors that I use to trade on. And this is a reduction of three of those monitors into one. On the left-hand side, we have the daily futures contract with a bunch of trend lines and horizontal lines, 200-day moving average, the 100-day moving average, 50-day, 10, 9, and a bunch of different trend lines. In addition, we have the DMI that's tweaked a little bit. Next to that is the 15-minute chart of the S&P futures, and next to that is the daily chart of the VIX. The VIX is a very important chart in our trading. The VIX is an indicator of investors' fear and complacency. Generally, the VIX moves in the opposite direction of the market i.e. if the market goes up, the VIX comes down. And you can just barely see that approximately six days ago, the market hit a bottom and we've been rallying since. The VIX hit a high and has been falling since. That's how it generally works. When it does not work this way, it can lead to some great opportunities for us to create a trade. In addition, understanding the VIX and how that affects emotions of individual traders helps us to stay out of danger, especially on the downside. Our next chart, and again, this is a bit, a bit mumbled on your screen, but I call this the market snapshot. And again, this is a combination of many different screens. It includes the Dow Jones, the NASDAQ, 60-minute, E-minute futures, the banking index, the tick, the trend, the VIX, advanced decline line, the oil market's up there. And I think that's pretty much most of those charts. Now what, what this does for us is to help us determine where the market is at a certain point in time, the time that you're looking at it, but more importantly, where the market might be headed into the rest of the day. So again, I think this was taken at around 12 o'clock. And there are, you know, some signs in there that indicate that the market might be getting a little bit top heavy. And that's, that's how we use this market snapshot. Now, we are actually going to, sorry, we'll just leave it there for now. So now the big question is, is how do we go about placing trades and making money? As Rob said, you know, we look at fundamentals and technicals. In addition to what Rob said about the fundamental analysis, we also look at basic fundamental analysis in the rest of the world. What's happening in China? Is slow growing? Is it slowing down? What's happening in Europe? Are there any major bank failures? Any, anything that should be on our radar that may affect us in the U.S.? Then we look at what's happening at home. What's happening with our GDP? Is it rising, staying the same, uh, predicting to go lower? We look at and analyze all the economic reports that come out. Unemployment, PPI, housing starts, just to name a few. So those all play into market direction. Now as a chartist, I believe that most everything you need is in the chart, and that the other fundamental stuff is on the outside. Oftentimes, uh, putting the two together is beneficial, and that's why we use a, a combination of that. However, fundamental analysis usually requires a longer term, uh, I'm sorry, a longer time horizon than 
what we at Blue Nose have. We are generally selling options anywhere from one week out to five weeks out. Uh, one thing I forgot to mention too is we also look at the geopolitical risks and how they are affecting the market or how they might affect the market. Once we've assessed all this, we begin to analyze the charts. We're looking for short-term extremes, i.e. Overbar overbought and oversold conditions. When we are analyzing the charts, we are trying to pick a range of where the market will not go as opposed to where it will go. It's often a lot easier to determine where the market's not going to go than where it is. For example, what are the chances that the S&P will be at 2,000 in the next three to four weeks? We're currently trading at 1873 and a half, so uh, 120, I don't know, buck and a quarter points up from here. The likelihood of that happening is not, not very likely. What are the chances we're going to be at 1,500 in the next two to three, four weeks? Again, the chances of that are not very likely. So once we identify particular ranges where we want to sell strikes, we then determine what expiration to sell. Expiration is when we as a seller of an option if we've sold something week one and it expires two weeks from now, if we haven't done anything with that and the option is not in the money, then we collect all the premium. There are five different expirations. The most liquid and most heavily traded is what's called regular expiration, and that occurs on the third Friday of each month. The second expiration which has the most liquidity and is mostly traded is the end of the month and that occurs at the last day of the month at four o'clock now the cash market closes at four the futures market closes at 4 15. so except well it always closes at 4 15. but the options for the end of month expire at four o'clock and then there are weekly options. There's week one, two, four, and five, if there are enough Fridays. Weekly options always expire on Friday at four o'clock. We primarily trade the regular and end of month options with occasional weekly options. Okay, now we're gonna go to some actual trades that, that we play. I hope everyone can see my red arrow here. Right here is April 3rd, and this is April 4th. You can see from April 27th, we had a nice run up. On the 3rd, we're approaching uh, all time highs. So we're beginning to think that the time is right to sell some calls. So on April 4th, we sold the May 1940 call, and we sold the end of month April 1935 call. On these particular trades, it turned out that we were very right. The market suffered a, a pretty large meltdown, one of the, the largest we've seen in quite a while, which is still very small relative to normal market action. On on April 10th, this long down day here, and April 11th, we covered both of those calls for a combined 4.35 points. Each point in the E-mini is worth $50. And each point in the regular size contract is worth $250. So 
So that was an example of the trade that worked out very, very well for us. They don't always work out that well. And sometimes they go horribly wrong. But we've been fortunate in the past and are hoping to be so in the future that our profitable trades outnumber our losing trades. On April 7th, just a continuation of, of the long down day, we sold the end of month 1910 call, which is not on the screen, but they would be way up here, right? This is 1890, this is 1910. And we sold our calls over here. We sold the 1940, which is up here, a pretty good distance away. So back to the trade we did on the 7th. We sold the end of month April 1910 call and also the regular expiration of the April 17 and a half put. We thought the market was getting a little bit overbought, but the VIX had jumped up dramatically. And that's often a very good time to sell or strangle and that's what we did. A strangle is when you sell a call and a put at the same time. On um, I think I misspoke. I'm sorry. We saw that on April 7th. On April 10th, this big down day. We had the regular expiration April 17 and a half put that we had sold at 175. Because of the market action and the internals of the market using the, the snapshot, it looked like we were going to go lower. So we exited out of our 17 and a half put and suffered a 0.05 loss or $2.50. The next day on the 11th, we covered the 1910 call at a profit of 1.3. In addition, on April 10th, we sold the end of month 1890 call, that range right here. And we sold the 1680 put, which is way down here. And those were for the end of the month. We felt the market had come a, a pretty good ways and we're expecting some sort of a bounce. Not quite what we are experiencing, but um, some sort of a bounce. On April 16th, this day right here, we ended up covering the call that we sold, the 1890 call, at a loss of 3.5. In addition, we had sold the 1885 call somewhere, I can't remember the exact date, in here, and we covered that as well today uh, for a loss of 4.2. So that's, that's there, those are some examples of some winning trades and some losing trades. Now let's talk about risk for a moment. The one thing that we pride ourselves on at Blue Nose is our ability to handle risk and to manage risk. Without a strong risk management plan, any trading plan is doomed for disaster. A couple things we do to ensure proper risk management, we don't over leverage the account. We're not always in the market. We're quick to take a small loss. Et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the next trade, and then I'll turn it over to Rob. We have uh, an 1895 call. And we're going to go to our next slide. Oh, previous slide. This is a chart, and we're running out of time, so I'm going to speak a little faster and a little quicker. This is a chart of the S&P futures, 120 minute chart. This red candle right here ended up turning into be a bearish engulfing candle, which is an indication that the market might pull back, which was very important today because our 1895 call was getting to the point where we may have to cover it uh, at a loss. 
that may eventually still happen. It may not, but we were able to get one more day and closer to time expiration. So seeing that on the 120 minute chart, we then went to the S&P cash chart. On the five minute chart, there was some resistance right at 18, Eighteen eighty-three and a half to eighty-four. We went as high as uh, eighty-five ten. You always have to give your resistance and support a couple of points. It's not an exact science, but we did that. We put our line at fifty-five ten, and if we broke that, we were going to end up out of the trade. As it turns out, uh, our judgment today was correct. The market did end up lower. We closed down at seventy-two, right down here. Uh, with the option, uh, I'm not sure where it settled, but it was closing at six, and I think it fell around uh, three and a half or four today. So those are some examples of the real life trades that we made. Doesn't include all the trades we made in April. Doesn't include all of our winners or all of our losses, but that's a, a general sense. And Rob, back to you. Hey, uh, thanks, Joe. That, that, I think it's a Relatively fair representation of the way things typically go. I mean, like Joe said, you know, it'd be nice to think that we win 100% of the time, but we don't. And, uh, you know, in the interest of, you know, fair disclosure, I don't want to cherry pick good stuff. I mean, it goes both ways and on balance. Um, if you if you glance through the next several slides, actually, um, you'll see um, individual tear sheets for each of our uh, four programs. Um, the EI program, the BI program, those are the two S and P programs. Then the the CC and the CL are the energy programs, which are which of course have a much shorter track record. And I I don't want to you know they're newer programs. Um, I don't really want to dwell on on performance too much um, because I know that, that David will be circling back with you guys to talk about performance and any other questions that you might have. Um, but but there is one kind of performance related. Uh, slide that I, that I do want to spend about you know, 30 seconds, maybe a minute talking about it, and it's one that we're kind of proud of here at the end, um, which is what we're calling the slide here, Awards of Excellence. I mean, like most, uh, like most folks in our industry, we report our, um, our performance to, to various um, reporting or various agencies, uh, Barclay Head being, uh, I don't know if popular is the right word, but, but certainly widely followed. We report um, or uh, performance numbers to them, and, and they rate and rank uh, CTAs based on various criteria. And we've been very fortunate uh, over the course of the last five years to have, to have landed in their top ten in the option strategies category numerous times, and and in the top ten, uh, you know, for the for the whole year of uh, you know 2011. And, and and hopefully, you know, there's obviously no no guarantee that we'll be able to achieve those results going forward. But it certainly doesn't represent all the CTAs in the universe. But but uh, you know we're, we're we're pretty proud of that, um, and, it, and the fact that it spans you know several years, um, and, uh, and since we're trying to generate consistent performance, you know, we think that this is just another indicator of the fact that we've been able to do that. Um, so to close out the uh, you know the prepared remark portion of the of the webinar, I mean, I would leave you with uh, just a few quick points about us as a firm and 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 kind of what we're we're about what we're trying to do. Um, you know, we put a premium, pardon the pun, on uh, capital preservation. I mean, we're we, Joe and I, and and the folks who work with us here at Blue Nose are in this for the long haul. Um, and and the only way we're going to be able to do that is if we are if we are diligent, as we can be, in working to make sure that we preserve our clients' capital. So know that that's a paramount concern for us. Uh, we also believe very firmly, and I think you know in Joe's description of how we look at the markets and how we view things, um, you, you know, you can see that that for us, hope is not an investment strategy. Um, wh when we're wrong, we're wrong. We we you know we admit it quickly, and uh, you know reposition accordingly. Um, you know, in our opinion, hoping a bad trade suddenly turns in your favor and 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 works out is a really poor, it's a really poor way to uh, to manage to manage other people's money or any money for that matter. Um, we also, you know, leverage, you know, there's enough leverage in, inherent in what we do. We, we don't use excessive leverage to, to try to juice returns. Um, uh, we didn't really talk all that much about it, but, uh, you know, if it, if it comes up in a question, we'd be happy to address it. And that is, 
we do have a, a disciplined um, you know exit strategy when things don't work in our favor um, you know we, we hope you know, it's our intention that that, that disciplined exit strategy uh, you know, hopefully aids us in minimizing what, what are inevitable drawdowns I mean it's just a part of it's the nature of the beast but uh, you know we hope that by having that disciplined exit strategy we can we can keep those uh, those drawdowns to a minimum um, I, I think we're probably running out of little time and, and you know maybe um, we can open it up, David, uh, for, for some questions. If there are any, we're happy to answer any of them. Um, so I'll, I'll kick it back to you and or whoever has to moderate the uh, whatever questions there may be from the folks who are here. Well, thank you, Je uh, Rob. Um, I actually had a question for Joe, but let me uh, first ask, does anybody in the room have any questions? Uh, this is your time if you had anything on your mind. Okay, well, while well, people may be, may not think, and uh, Joe, are you still, uh, you still logged in to where you can talk? I am. Wonderful. I think um, if you would, you know, I was just curious what you thought as far as, you know, index, I mean, yes, obviously, but uh, just the, the U.S. indexes, you know, and crude, I mean, two of your big specialties. What do you think for uh, Q2? Here this year, what I mean, what's your outlook? What is your thought process on uh, what we've got here in the near term? As far as market movement, yeah, I mean, what what directions do you like and why, and what are you thinking about well, doing? I think Q two is a uh, is a longer time frame than we generally like to look at. The great thing about what we do is we only have to go and try and project what's going to happen, you know, two to four weeks out. So with that being said, uh, what I think is in store in, in Q2, 3, and 4, and I don't hold uh, a, a lot of value to what I think about long-term uh, projections, is that uh, we had an incredible year last year in the S&P. I think it was up over 32%, which is extraordinary for the S&P. I don't think it's going to continue to that. And as of today, it certainly hasn't. I think last year we closed at uh, around 1850, so we're up 20 handles, you know, about a, about a percent. Our performance has uh, been much better than that. And that is due to a more normal operating market, a market that both goes up and down instead of straight up. So I think there'll be more of that. I think there's still a larger correction to come. And the NASDAQ uh, was on its way. It hit its 200-day moving average uh, about six days ago and bounced uh, very strongly off of that, and that's really what's preceded this run. But I don't think earnings are there to support it, and I'm not sure what effect of the winter weather is going to have uh, on earnings. So, you know, we're right in the midst of earnings season now. So you do think that uh, overall we are going to get back into a more normal market instead of just bulls running away with it? I think absolutely. And uh, I think it's already been proven here in the first, uh, you know, quarter and uh, half a month. Uh, which is for, for us is very nice to see because that brings volatility in, which means the premium is greater. We can uh, hopefully make more money and be actually safer because we can be further away from uh, the S&P. Well, uh, I guess uh, there are no real questions other than just me. So in the, uh, in, you know, to be nice to everybody's time. I know it's getting late. So, um, Rob, Joe, I really can't thank y'all enough for coming. And everybody who's been here tonight, um, I'm sure everybody's got questions and you're going to come up with them. Um, as well as I know at a time Rob uh, was not able to go through the performance. Uh, it's something that we're all very proud of. I've been proud to have my money there. So, um, if you have any questions about the performance, uh, if you have any questions about strategies, anything at all, 
um, please, here's my info. Um, I believe it's uh, also in the little chat box there. Uh, give me a give me a holler. Um, yeah, I'll be happy to talk about Blue Nose. Uh, I've been doing it for a while now. But uh, thank you again, Joe and Rob. Hey, uh, I really, yeah. Let, let me just say one quick thing about money. You know, not only do we uh, manage other people's money, but we also manage our own money. So we have quite a bit of our own personal money in these uh, exact strategies that we are employing. Or whatever that's worth. Well, yeah, I, I mean, statements like that help me sleep better knowing that you have mine as well. So, uh, <laughs> but you know, <laughs> thank you both. Uh, seriously, thank you all so much for taking time out of your schedule. I know you all are busy. And uh, thank you, everybody, for coming tonight. Um, I will uh, be sending out a uh, recording of the event from tonight so you can kind of go back over some of the trades and the strategies and uh, hear what everybody had to say. And, and like I said, please don't, uh, please don't be afraid to holler and uh, let me know if you have any more questions or just want some more info. So I, I guess uh, other than that, y'all have a good evening and uh, thank you again, Joe and Rob. Thank you, David. Thank you, Appreciate David. it very much. Thanks for all your time.